Her interim principal at Haverdale College, and on behalf of our students and staff, I welcome you to our 2015 graduate reception. Please stand at this time and join in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I would like to recognize some special guests that are with us tonight. Dr. Ann Garrett, Superintendent of Haywood County Schools. Dr. Bill Melty, Associate Superintendent of Haywood County Schools. Dr. Carol Douglas, Secondary Supervisor of Haywood County Schools. Dr. Doris Green, recently retired principal from Haywood Early College. Ms. Jan Denton, Counselor at Haywood Early College. <laughs> Mr. Greg McClam, College Liaison. <laughs> the faculty and staff of Haywood Early College, and I'd ask that they please stand, if you would. This is a big night for our students, but a big night for them also to finish, to see their students finish and receive a diploma. Uh, from, from Haywood Community College, Dr. Barbara Parker, President. Dr. Parker, if you would please speak. <laughs> Mr. Matt Heimberg, High School Programs Director at Haywood Community College. Dr. Laura Leatherwood, Vice President of Student Services at Haywood Community College. And at this time, so we can show our appreciation as a staff and our students to their parents, would our parents please stand? We have a speaker tonight, and our speaker is Dr. Doris Green. She is the first and only principal ever at Haywood Early College during its nine years of existence. She, in many ways, is Haywood Early College. Dr. Green retired in early March, but is back to see her last class be recognized. Dr. Green, will you please come forward and share a few words? Thank you. Thank everyone for um, inviting me back. Um, and thank you for allowing me to be part of your graduation 2015. Tonight we're honoring and celebrating the accomplishments of these talented and hardworking students. I could have um, a, a really great story about each one of these students and that's one of the things that is so wonderful about early college and that is that uh, we are able to get to know each and, and every one and uh, be a part of their life and, and be a part of a, of a school family. Uh, I consider it a privilege to have been able to be a part of the educational journey of your students. Haywood Early College has been a very rewarding highlight of my career. Beginning a school is a lot of hard work. And I, I appreciate the compliment that uh, Mr. Miller gave me, but you know, it takes, um, I'm just one of many in this room that, um, that worked and had the dream. And uh, when you start a school, it, you know, it takes many, many people, it takes parents, it takes community, and it takes uh, dedicated students as well. Uh, I would like to, um, just in closing, um, I would like to issue um, a challenge uh, to uh, all the folks here, and that is uh, in taking early college to the next level, uh, I think that we need a new building for Haywood Early College. And to do that, it's going to have, it's going to take everybody in this room, it will take 
all the school people, all the community people, we all know what um, a hard time uh, schools are having with budgets. And so for this to happen, it will have to be a concerted effort uh, from everyone. But again, thank you so much for having me. And, um, and students, I always, uh, always, always remember you as um, one of the great um, highlights of my life, my 40th year of students. And so, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Green. Ms. Ashley Smith, valedictorian of the class of 2015 with a GPA of 4.4, please come forward to be recognized and to address your fellow graduates. especially you. <laughs> Good. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations to all of us because I know it's not been easy. We've all had our hard times. We've all had you know fun times as well. And I definitely want to recognize a few people who's inspired all of us and has helped all of us. Uh, starting with my mother. She's helped me through everything. She's been my backbone through thick and thin. She stays up with me at 2 o'clock in the morning to finish writing a paper. And she knows that she has to get up the next morning when her alarm clock goes off at like 5 o'clock and it's 2 a.m. And she knows whatever kind of ideas she's going to give me, I'm going to shoot them down. And I'm going to get in this flustered mess because I'm not going to graduate and I'm going to fail this class. And my mom has just always been there to just help support me. And I want to thank her for that. Um, the next people I'd like to recognize is my grandparents. My grandmother is outstanding. She has proofread every single paper I've ever wrote for this school. And I just want to thank her for that. And I would also like to thank my grandfather because he just helps me so much. He solves every problem that I can't solve. Math, reality, life, he just helps me so much. And I know this one time um, my great-grandmother had passed away and I was in Mr. Brumfield's class. So I got my makeup assignment while we went to Ohio. And there's this one problem that I just couldn't figure out. And I was like, well, you know, my grandpa's with me. And we'll just ask him, see if he can figure it out for me. And he sat there at the table. And I do, I call it the weird grandpa things. Because he has to have his paper sort of just right. He has to have a book laid out. His pencil has to be sharpened just right. And he he started working on this problem. And I gave him some easier ones. He spent the entire weekend working on this problem. No joke. The entire weekend trying to figure out this problem. He just couldn't figure it out. And he's like, you know, it's going to hurt your homework grade. And we've got to figure it out. It's like, Grandpa, it's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's okay. So I go back into class on Monday. And I was like, Mr. Brumfield, i got to figure out this problem. Because my grandpa can't figure it out. i got everything else done. But I just can't figure out this one problem. And he sits down and he looks at the problem and he said, you know, actually, we didn't even have to do this problem. I was like, are you serious? My grandpa spent the entire weekend working on this problem and he didn't even have to, you know, didn't even have to do it. So I told him, you know, kind of teach me how to do this problem so I could go back and tell my grandpa because it was going to bother him because we couldn't figure out how to do this problem. So I just want to thank my grandpa and my grandma for everything they have done for me. Um, I would also like to thank Ms. Pace because I know she's not only saved my life, but she's probably saved everyone's life in here with schedules, with personal problems. Just I feel like Ms. Pace has also been one of those people like to lay the foundation of our school because she's done an outstanding job. Um, I also want to thank Ms. Blankenship because I feel like you've done an awesome job. I feel like you personally help every one of your students. If they're failing in class, I just feel like you, you just take the time to, to help them. And I want to thank you guys for that. Um, and that goes for all the teachers here. Because I feel like without the teachers that we have, our school would not be what it is. And we would not succeed as much because you guys take so much time to help us. Ms. Giles, thank you. Because I said it in so many of her classes. And I just want, I just want to thank all of you guys. So with all that stuff, all the recognitions done, I just want to you know, get that over with. And I was sit down and I was figuring out, you know, what I should say here and kind of what I should be talking about and ask advice from my mom and my advice from my grandma and it just wasn't really what I wanted to say. So I looked up speeches on YouTube, what else are we supposed to do? And I liked some of the stuff from some of them, but it just wasn't the message that I wanted to send to our class. And so I kind of came up with two stories that kind of weave their way into what I thought a good message might be. And so the first one is, um, I recently started going back to church, and we have a Czechoslovakia team going to, or a mission team going to Czechoslovakia, 
and they were having um, a fundraiser, it's a taco dinner. So me and my mom were standing in line with my niece, and she's swinging her jacket around, she's hitting everyone around her, I'm like, Kendall, you know, we've got to stop, we're having this battle between her. And this lady turns around, and she has this high energy, like my aunt, my aunt's a kindergarten teacher, so she's everywhere. And she's like, you know, do you want to see pictures of my little girl, and do you want to see pictures of my dog, and the Christmas cookies, and you know, how many tacos do you plan to eat? She's trying to distract my niece. And finally, my niece, you know, settled down, and me and her, we got talking, and she was asking me, you know, questions about college and all these different things. And, um, you know, I told her I was graduating from early college, and I was going to go to UNC in the fall. And other than that, I'm not really sure. I'll just kind of land where I was going to land. And she said that she had prayed this verse. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. And she prayed this verse over her daughters and, you know, hoped that it would help inspire them. So a couple nights later, my mom was like, you know, did you ever look up this Bible verse? I was like, I don't remember what it was. I said, I remember Jeremiah, but I don't remember anything else. My mom's, my mom's like, 29, 11. So we got our Bible out, we looked up this verse, and it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and to, and to, plans to give you hope and benefit your future. Sorry, I lost my spot. Um, and I just kind of stopped because I thought that, that that just described my life so well. Because I feel like there is a plan for all of us. And some of us, like Haven, know she's going to be a pharmacist and she's got it all figured out. Some people like me and Alicia are like, oh, no. <laughs> so I just thought that that, that quote just, just really stuck to me. So a few weeks later, we have a clip conference. And that's where a bunch of ministers and bishops come in from all over the world. And they were preaching to us and talking to us. And we had this conference. And so I went over and I was sitting kind of by the side. And I hit this lady with my bag because I always carried just so much stuff with me. And it turns out it's the same lady in the taco dinner line. And I was asking her how her, her daughter was doing and stuff. And she said, you know, she called me the other night. She was crying. She was freaking out. Didn't know what she was going to do. And I asked, you know, what had happened. And she said, the biggest test of my daughter's career is she had failed. And I don't know if it was like the MCAT or whatever it was, but she could not go on with her classes because she had failed this exam. And the mom was trying to tell her, you know, it's okay. You can take it again. Look at it next time. And the daughter's like, I just don't think I want to do this. Like, I don't think I'm going to do this anymore. And the mom's thinking, first, I just paid two years for college, and you, you don't want to do any of these classes anymore? And she's kind of freaking out because she just wasted two years in college. And the lady just kind of, the daughter just decided that's not what she wanted to be, and she found something else that fit her career better, and that's where she's going to go now. And I thought that that was really cool that this girl, I mean, kind of like, hey, she decided from when she was a young girl that this is what she wanted to be when she grew up, and now she grew up, and she was working for it, and then it just completely changed but it's still okay. The next story I have was um, about Steve Jobs, and it was one of the ones that I found when I was looking on YouTube. And he was, we all know that he didn't graduate from college, and he said he did like a semester, and he became a drop-in student. And he was talking about all these dots that he had, and it's all about the dots. And I'm thinking, we need to go to Walmart, find some of these dots, or you know, if Steve Jobs has dots, we need to find dots too, because we want to be successful at Steve Jobs. And he went on to talk, and it's more like connect the dots so you can't physically buy these dots like I thought. So, yeah. And he was saying how some of them are going to be a lot wider, some are going to be a lot darker, some are going to be really close, some are going to be really far, and you're going to wish that you could move some of them. But all those dots represent memories and tragedies that have happened in your life. And I just kind of thought that that was really cool because I never thought about your life as a life event being a dot, and some of them are going to be darker, and some of them are going to be lighter. And he went to say that his life was never about going from point A to point B to point C. And he kind of jumped around. And he said, but it was cool because when I look back on it, I still have a great picture. He said, as long as your dots just create a cool picture, that's all that matters. He said, it doesn't matter that they go in order, or that some are a little bit too far, or some are a little bit too light, just as long as they create a cool picture. And I thought that that was an awesome story. So now we're making our dots, and we're all going to be moving on, and we're going to be changing our lives. And I just think it's, I think it's really cool that we all have our own visions that we have, but it's going to change. And some of them may not, may not change, but I feel like we're all going to change our majors, and we're going to change colleges, and we're going to change careers, and we're not just going to go, I'm going to be a pharmacist, and now I'm going to work in this pharmacy for the rest of my life, and that's it. Or I'm going to be a teacher, and I'm going to work at Hamilton Early College for the rest of my life. It's not going to happen. You're going to have changes, and you're going to make your own thoughts, and that's okay for us to do it. One more thing that Pastor Nick had always talked about is he talks about not wanting to forget your past. That you can kind of look at it, but it's good to look back on your past in a positive way to see how far you've come.
because without looking at how far you've come, it's hard to see how far you can go. And I think that that was really powerful. So the last thing I want to leave us with is a quote by Steve Col Stephen Colbart. And he said, thankfully, all dreams can change because if we'd stuck with our first dream, the world would be overrun with cowboys and princesses. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Thank you, Ashley. At this time, is Rachel Ward salutatorian of the class of 2015 with a GPA of 4.2. Please come forward to be recognized and to address your classmates. Good evening. When I found out that I had the honor of being salutatorian for the amazing class of 2015, I honestly was thinking, this is not good. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. I'm proud of. I'm, I'm proud that I have made it through high school successfully, but I also know my God-given talent was not public speaking or about other students. The graduate, the graduates in this class are not traditional, and cl cliches do not describe their accomplishments that they have made in the past years. Knowing my inability to write something that constituted a graduation speech, I turned to the internet for advice, where my teachers have told me to never go <laughs> or rely on for true information. So I clicked on Wiki Answers to look at the nine-step guide to write my graduation speech. <laughs> Don't worry, I only read the very beginning. It said, step one, know your limitations. <laughs> so thankfully, people have already been put on this earth that are good with saying the right words at the right times. This group of people can be broken down into groups. Teachers, family, and Dr. Phil. <laughs> Our teachers and administrators have taken four to five long years equipping us with the skills needed to learn, think, and solve future challenges that are sure to come our way. The lessons they have taught us go far past the textbook material, and we have become a reflection of their work and time invested in us so that we can reach our goals. Our parents and family members have also helped us. From the time we were learning the color blue to the time they taught us how to drive, they have been encouraging us to succeed and have raised some pretty cool people. <laughs> High school is ending and the next part of our lives is just starting. I know many graduates have plans to go to college this fall while others have plans to dive into a new career. The only thing that we can know for certain is that things are going to change. My hope is that while our lives are changing, we become determined to go beyond what is expected of us. Our world needs people who have more compassion and empathy for others, along with more ambition. Take the ambition and your dreams and turn them into something more than you, what you could imagine. Not knowing the amazing things you could accomplish or the height of your potential in this big world out here is just part of the adventure. So congratulations, class of 2015, and in the words of Dr. Seuss, today is your day, you're off to great places. You're off and away, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can still your, steer yourself in any direction you choose. You are on your way and you know what you know, and you are the guy who will decide where to go. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Dr. Grant and Dr. Garrett, if you would please come forward to present the promise. <coughs> Class of 2015, when your name is called, please come forward to be recognized. Parents, we certainly want you to come down and take pictures if you like, so we'll have a little bit of time between names. So when I call your student's name, we'll give you time to get up and get the picture you would like to take. Uh, students, when I call your name, if you'll come up and receive your diploma. Mariana Alfonso. Ashley Ellen Cagle.
<laughs> Dylan Wesley Pro. Mateo William De La Cruz. <laughs> Alicia Michelle Evans. Jacob Martin Garcia. Haven Brick and Muse. <laughs> Ashley Elaine Smith. Zachary Tyler Smith in Ascension. <laughs> Kaylin Marie Stevens. Michaela Kristen Trashport in absentia. <laughs> Rachel Lee Warren.
This concludes our recognition ceremony. We hope you will stay for refreshments and pass on congratulations and best wishes to our class of 2015. I appreciate your attendance and your support of Haywood Early College. Class of 2015, your hard work is appreciated and much success to you as you move forward. I have one last assignment for the graduates, so we'll get back right there as soon as we're through. Adults, you get to get in line first. Thank you very much for your attendance tonight.